sorry y'all y'all know i'm weird whatever hey everybody what's up it's your girl bondi blue so let's go ahead let's go ahead hey everybody what's up it's your girl bondi blue okay follow me on instagram and let's get into the video Hey girl, hey, what's going on? It's your girl, Bondi Blue, and I got a whole bunch of topics for y'all. But first, I wanna remind everybody, we are getting closer and closer to the Heritage and Reset and Retreat Ghana trip, November 1st through 9th, you guys. I wanna make sure that I'm pushing this on y'all, okay? Because we only have so much time left. You guys go to resetbydesignwellness.com to purchase your tickets, it's going to be an amazing experience, and I cannot wait to find out what my African ancestry is, okay? Because this trip also comes along with that. We're going to be in two different locations in Ghana, so it's going to be informative, girl. It's going to be life-changing, because I've never been to the motherland, all right? And I cannot wait to go, because they always say you feel real different, you know what I'm saying? You step down on the ground, and you just kind of feel real different. You connect, you know? And I'm all about the alignment and the connection girl so go to the website sign up i hope to see y'all there okay now girl look <laughs> now girl look we got stuff to talk about and i'm gonna try my damnedest to not be here all day with these topics now okay I want you to play catch up i want you to wait until i get to the end of my song saying oh yeah now i remember i'm sorry y'all that's what I was just listening to. I hope everybody is having a good day. If not, I hope that your day is made better by me. Hello, all of the people from Tasha's channel. What's up? Hey, girl. Hey. Okay. It's good to see y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. Like the video. Share it. Okay. Yes. Listen, I was just listening to the juvenile tiny desk on NPR when I was editing all my graphics, girl. It was good. I love that he brought Manny Fresh there. He also had Trombone Shorty there. Hey, Troy. Um, and then it was another artist um, that's really um, successful here whose name I forgot because I don't really know them like that. But I've heard of them. But, you know, like I personally know Troy. And then, um, cause me and Troy grew up together and then, uh, you know, child, I saw juvenile, his old lady and a little dog in the airport when I was leaving to go to, uh, Florida for Tasha to do unwind with Tasha K. They were coming back. It was so funny because I wanted to say something to him. He was smiling so hard, like, and I really wanted to say, Juvie, I can't wait to see that NPR because, I, you know, my ears to the streets, I knew it was coming. But, you know, you don't know how Juvie going to be. You know, word on the curb in the city is Juvie can be, you know what I'm saying, little bit, little bit, little bit much of an asshole, okay? <laughs> just a little bit of an asshole. So, you know, when I when I hear people got a reputation like that, I just, you know, admire their work from afar. Please understand me. Juvenile is one of my favorite rappers of all time. Nobody can ride a beat like Juvenile. Yet and still, he is disrespectful as hell, and it's all in the lyrics, girl. I'm not even going to lie. Like some of the lyrics to the songs, give me a project, give me a hood rat, one that don't give up and say she took that. <laughs> this is what I grew up listening to, girl. I know all of these words. My mama sent me by my grandma. My grandma flipped out and said we ain't going to have no evil in this house. So I rolled out. Scored me house and sold out. But I thought when I started living up in these old house, just started one of the bras because she was uh, eating uh, 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 all over her chest and tongue. It was ill done. I sped up it other children. She was a hope she gave me head behind the building. Ain't selling records, but a mouth could sell a million. If you want to take it there, we bless it. I ain't going to do it with you, but listen. <laughs> he is really one of the best underrated rappers of all time. But he make my nerves bad. And now that I'm older and I listen to these lyrics, it's just like, y'all was really informing the young boys to do a lot of terrible things to us when we was growing up. So we appreciate you for that. <laughs> like, no, girl, I got in trouble. Like my daddy, my daddy had never put child control on anything in our household, right? We had a computer in 95, like, you know what I'm saying? So we used to make CDs, me and my daddy. That was our thing. You know what I'm saying? Anything technology, me and my daddy would do together. 
So when it came to the CDs and the computer and all of that, one day he get on there and see, I didn't download it. I got that fire. <laughs> okay. The lyrics to I got that fire. I was like, daddy, I'm very clear that this is just a song. I, at that young age, I had to be like 12. I don't abide by none of it that's going on in this song, but I still like the way it sounds. You need somebody to stay shy, always got money, pockets stay full of them big face honeys, go with tattoos all over his own, a nigga with a gold grill, diamonds in the chong. Now tell your girl that you giving me the, you don't love that. You need somebody there to put you in your place. Put the on you any time of the day. Somebody that'll give you a little something if it's right. Somebody that you may not see for three or four nights. <laughs> and it's all like the Statue of Liberty. Gonna fire like a match in a cigarette. Okay? Gonna take care of his kids if it's his. <laughs> okay? Nigga, that's a handsome little son of a... And like me. Never get tired. You looking for a hot boy and girl? I got that fire. My daddy said, I am... I just, I, what have I done? Parental controls. <laughs> I couldn't watch what's, I say, daddy, daddy, I can't watch what's love got to do with it. I can't watch the five heartbeats. What is going on? <laughs> okay, this is a remote thing back in the day. Remote. Child. The times, child, the time. <laughs> so shout out to Juvie. Listen, shout out to Juvie and the problematic, the problematic music that really did put me up on game, to be real, to be honest and real. Because I was very, very good at scoping out men that were unsafe, girl. <laughs> Shout out to my po. Okay. But let's go ahead and get into it, girl. Okay. So we're going to start off, you know, we're going to start and end. In Caucasian people news. Yes. Okay, Madonna. And this is for the girls. This is for my black girls like Erica De Niro. Y'all the generation above me. By the time I came in in 88, we only knew Madonna for acting in some of her music. And I'm not going to lie. The resurgence in the late 90s music makes the people come together. You know what I'm saying? We was here for it. Okay. We, we was jumping on it. <laughs> and then what happened was Madonna started doing weird stuff. You know, you, you adopt the black kids, mm -hmm. you do certain stuff that seems problematic as a Caucasian lady, you know, you're, you're messing with yourself, you come in and out of the black community as, you know, as you feel comfortable doing so, and kind of making a caricature of it, you know, when she go and get her goals and all of that, which I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Y'all probably gonna see me pop up with diamonds in my teeth at some point. Just know that, okay? I'm getting to that point. It took me a minute to get my tattoos on my forearms. Okay, eventually we getting these diamonds on the insides. Okay, one of my homeboys from back in the dating guy goes, nah, it's over. It's over because he's literally one of the smartest, most like, you know, studious people I grew up with. And he got goals. And I was just like, when did you get goals? Because normally it's had goals back then. You know what I'm saying? Because growing up and getting goals now, and I love it. It's like away with you, respectability politics. Away with you. Okay. <laughs> That's how I feel, girl. That's how I feel. Because essentially people try to like demonize anything black people do. But if you do your research, like we was doing that before it was a respectability politics thing. Like you mad we got our diamonds in our teeth. Like I'm so sorry that we can't have them in the basement <laughs> or wherever, you know, the other people leave. They, they look in the picture I'm reading. She got a grill in child. I cannot. <laughs> But according to page six, Madonna was rushed to the hospital after being found unresponsive. Her manager previously, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, her manager previously revealed the singer had developed a serious bacterial infection, which led to a several day stay in the ICU. She was reportedly intubated for one night, but later got the tubes removed. Child, Madonna said, I'm not done yet. Ah. <laughs> You're like, but you ain't gonna get me yet. Listen, it felt like it felt like the law was calling her, and my girl was like, "I think the not, not yet. You ain't gonna Michael Jackson, Prince Whitney, me, because <laughs> you know she she's in that 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 category of of artists that transcended race and in and all of that at one point. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, y'all. 
Yeah, y'all, I ain't gonna lie. I wouldn't have wanted to see Madonna go out like that. But I'ma just be real with y'all and tell y'all that I'ma keep saying it. As you get older, your body starts to weaken. So what you should not start doing is getting unnecessary surgeries to your body. Because what you're going to do is open your body up to have to fight off infection. And it's not going to be as strong as it was when you were in your 30s and your 40s. Because a lot of you, a lot of you women that I know out here in New Orleans, y'all work at the bank. Y'all make a nice little check. Y'all on Instagram, y'all see what the girl's doing. You got a little something, but it could be a little better. So now you won't go and get surgery. And you already are not that healthy with the way you handle your body. You don't work out. You don't strengthen your body. You eat whatever the hell you want. You probably drink and everything else. So you ain't doing nothing to preserve the strength of your body, but you're going to go and quit it so it can look a certain way. Please know that that's what's going on with Madonna. Please know Madonna has done several things to her body, especially over recent years. I feel like Madonna went and got a BBL or something. I, I, am I tripping or did it feel like Madonna went and got a BBL? Either way, we can see by her face and her breasts that she has done something and maybe too much. That's why y'all always going to hear me promote working out. Y'all always going to hear me promote caring more about the functioning of your body over how it looks, because if you care more about the functioning of your body, how it looks will take care of itself. Because please know, all of these people that y'all see in all of these Photoshop pictures, they look bad in person. They look bad in person. Okay? Understand this. So we glad that Madonna live, girl. She's still under medical care, but is expected to make a full recovery. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that because I know there are a few of y'all out there. My older sister, you know what I'm saying? My oldest sister, a lot of older girls out there that grew up loving Madonna, girl, y'all was going to be sick. So, you know, for y'all's sake, I'm glad that, you know, she made it through. But I also want all of the older women that follow me, that's always thinking about going to use their good check for this. Please understand them people don't look that good in person. Please understand it's not really worth it. You should just go to the gym. <laughs> okay. Child, they say, wait, TMZ said today that she has been nonstop throwing up since being released. So she's not out of the woods. And that's sad to hear. But just think about if she was somebody that would have went and just worked out and took good care of her body over these years. How we wouldn't be having this moment right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And let's not even talk about whatever other stuff she might have been putting in her system over the years so we just you know we glad that she's making it out because you know i y'all yeah, was a fan like i'm not gonna front on her i wasn't a fan of her music but i was a fan of girl a league of their own was my movie please don't play with me <laughs> a league of their own was my movie and i always felt like during times in the entertainment industry where it was cool and profitable and politically correct to align yourself with black people madonna did just that so we appreciate her for her contributions and we glad that she's okay today. Now let's go ahead and move on, y'all. So Jackie O's doctor is speaking out. Child Tasha released the video of me, you know, the, the snippet of me talking about DC Young Fly. Now the people that was in that actual live and heard the entirety of what I said, a lot of people was in agreement with me. But see, when you cut it up and slice it up and put it on the internet, it pisses everybody off. <laughs> Y'all was going to be mad anyway, girl. I'm used to y'all being mad when I talk about how y'all try to cover and, and you know, how y'all try to cover stuff up with the Lord. How y'all try to hide y'all shame and y'all guilt and then simultaneously use that to garner sympathy. Like religion hits you from all different standpoints. I seen somebody in the comments talking about, oh, well, when DC Young Fly preaches, he, you know, he helped me get through this. And I'm like, hey, baby, <laughs> I'm not about to argue with you about it. A dead clock is right twice a day. Of course, somebody that's telling you positive things from a Bible standpoint, from a religious standpoint, that's going to make you feel good. But if you're not a person that don't think beyond what you're hearing directly, then you don't understand how something is starting to sound repetitive, manipulative, and you see the response that he's getting from it. 
And it just starts to feel like, what is the actual point here? Is it to inspire? Is it? And if it is to inspire, is it to inspire? And this was my point that I made about women coming to him. Because if you don't know this, the whole system of preaching gets you pussy. Sorry to tell you, if you had not noticed that most churches are full of single black women led by black men. I don't know if you've noticed it. How women put men, God and preachers all in the same box together. Therefore, the way they interact with men very much comes from a, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior. This man is like Jesus, my Lord and Savior. He's going to come and lead me and take care of me and save me. When the truth of the matter is, you need to save yourself. When you're really looking at people, you can see <clears throat> that they are human. And most people expect way too much out of each other, especially when they have evidence of other things. And so for me, when it came to DC Young Fly, and we'll hop on this for a second, you know what I'm saying? When it came to DC Young Fly, you did not marry her, which is in accordance with the scripture. You did not marry her. You had three children with her out of wedlock and you make your money on criticizing and speaking negatively on the way people look. Yeah, it's jokes and shit. I love Wildin' Out. Please don't get me confused. I like DC Young Fly. I do. Love 85 South. Carlos and all of them. Fan. But I got to call it how I see it. And what I see is young men out here in the world living reckless as usual. But then when something happens, they want to Jesus and God us to death. And I just want you to pay attention to if somebody's words are matching with their actions. And y'all don't really pay attention to that. You hear him say something. You see people conveniently taking pictures every time he is bending down to pray. And after he's criticized for making, even by her friends, for making her funeral about himself. Even if he didn't do it intentionally, that's what the comments did, y'all. On every single blog that they posted that funeral in his speech, they were praising him. It had little to do with Jackie. So at the end of the day, you did a lot of things to cause people to look at you like, wait, what's really happening here? And all I said was, I wish that you would go and grieve in peace so that we can stop picking you apart like this. Because I don't want to pick anybody apart when they grieve in the loss of somebody that they love. If you really loved her. Because being with a woman, having kids with her don't mean you love somebody. It just don't. So excuse me for needing more evidence that somebody is you know, fully, fully believing and embodying what they talking about so hard when I don't see them acting it out in their life in the way God told you to live your life. Yes, her father didn't even honor her properly, which tells me if your own damn daddy can't make your funeral about you, it's because he's an asshole too. He probably raised you to be somebody to give yourself away to someone who is not giving back to you equally, which is with what most women do. Most women do this. Most women give of themselves in relationships with men, especially when they have kids with them. They give in an unequal way in an unbalanced manner. And that is being shown even in death and people point it out and now I'm the bad guy. I'm not saying if you flawed, you can't speak on your relationship with the Lord. That's not what I'm saying. You're not listening. And I'm not finna argue with you. But you should pay attention to intention. Boom. I think we have to keep in mind that these are celebrities. They will sell anything. What I am saying to you 
is that be mindful of people that are selling you something, but they're not showing it to you in their actual actions. That's what I'm telling you. I didn't even say that I don't feel like he's really grieving. I just said I feel like he's grieving in a way that is setting himself up for something. The way he's showcasing his emotions to us, the way he's talking about God, uplifting him and all of that. Yeah, that's all well and good. That's great. But something about it seemed like overkill when I look at the way you live your life, which is not in accordance with the religion that you heavily speak of. Excuse me. And when you put your, it's another thing before I read this comment. When you put your life out there in such a manner, when you do talk about your religion like that, when you do talk about and, and showcase the funeral online and all of that like that to thousands and thousands and millions of people and all of that, please understand you cannot control the fact that people are going to watch and people are going to have opinions. When things are private, you can protect yourself from so many people seeing and having an opinion. But when you decide to put it out there for the praise, you also have to be ready for people to come at you looking at you from a more investigative standpoint. So, Jackie O, the doctor finally said something, girl. Okay, I'm going to play that video and then I will give further commentary. All right. Hey, everyone. It's Dr. Zach. Yes, my name has been in the tabloid media and understandably sensationalized given the circumstances. I want to clarify certain facts that have not been reported and are public knowledge. Please understand that due to patient privacy laws and out of respect for all my patients, there will never be mention of specifics now or in the future of any of my cases. As many of you know firsthand, my reputation in Miami for safety is exemplary. I am not willing to operate without exception on any patient if my preoperative protocols for medical clearance are not wholly met. That means another physician of the patient's choosing examines the patient and verifies that patient's fitness for surgery in conjunction with other tests and labs that I request. This is a standard protocol to ensure all aspects of a patient's health are medically considered. Since graduating from my plastic surgery residency at Brown University, I have operated on 2,000 patients, which is roughly 6,000 hours in the operating room. Every procedure is always performed to the highest medical standard, and our safety protocols are diligently observed by my entire team. The state of Florida is especially strict when it comes to any issues involving medical treatment that may not have been performed to recognize standards, resulting in a poor patient outcome. This certainly applies to procedures like those I specialize in. This oversight results in immediate suspension of the provider's ability to perform the operation of concern. My medical license remains active and unrestricted, and I remain in good standing with the Florida Department of Health. With that being said, we are currently seeing patients in the office and performing surgeries. I somewhat don't believe you, sir. And I'm going to tell you something. I noticed a lot about his body language. First of all, a lot of hand movements and hand gestures disconnected from his voice, disconnected from his eyes. He's not connecting. <laughs> He's not connecting. It's not. This is all not connected, y'all. The hand movements. He's obviously reading from a prompter or some type of, you know, note card. So the fact that you have to read that you are in accordance with the laws makes me feel like you're lying in, in some in some place in here. You're lying. That's why you have to say it mechanically and you can't just say it naturally. You, you wouldn't really have to get up here if you knew your talking points and you already knew what the truth of the situation was. This is giving me that Jackie's passing has been detrimental to your business. Tasha did a uh, an interview with the woman who had done a deep dive on him. And I'm not exactly sure, but what it seems like, well, he has three stars. Like if you go and Google him, like there are people complaining about him on Google. Like he, he had, 
I've seen people complain about him, but I've also heard from Tasha's interview that he is known to sue people who do complain about his work or say that they, you know, had some type of complication. He also said that this was not his fault, which I feel like you're lying because there was some, if I'm, cause I could be wrong, but they, and I heard, and it hasn't been really clear, but there might've been some type of um, um, pre-existing condition that Jackie had. And if he would have done his due diligence, then maybe it would have been caught and she wouldn't have had the surgery. There's some question about that. Mm -hmm. But there is absolute question about his name and how he presents himself on social media. Because if you search him on social media, you'll find something different than if you were actually searching his real full name. So that's another thing that they were talking about with these doctors online is how it is really an oversaturated market, especially in Miami. So I believe that when it's an oversaturated market, there's going to be people falling through the cracks with not giving proper care. It's, it's just what it is. OK, when you oversaturate something, the, the value, the, the quality goes down. That's just how it is in anything. So I definitely feel like he isn't being forthcoming. This is something, once again, another dry statement because he gave a written statement two weeks ago and now you're coming out with a video and i feel like it's because the first statement was cold and you thought actually talking and moving your hands around like a robot was going to have a desired effect but it really only made the situation worse because to me you feel more desperate in this video meaning that it has affected your business and you want desperately for people to feel like it is safe to come to you even though maybe not so much so now you want us to know that everything is going good over there. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there are a whole bunch of other doctors that people can go to that have more than three stars when you Google them. And I believe if it's true that you have been suing women so that they don't speak out against you, so that they don't tell the truth of their surgery experience with you, then this is obviously nature's way of shutting you down and i'm in appreciation of it girl all right now let's go ahead and move on from here because i used to think that i was it's unknown nope <laughs> i think i was well enough but i'm wasting time trying to figure out you play your games this all about can't believe you're hurting me i met your girl what a difference what you see in her you ain't seen in me but i guess it was all just make believe <laughs> okay listen let's let's see Fans of Keisha Cole are fully aware of the love and heartbreak she has endured over the years. Thanks to the trials and tribulations she frequently opens up about in her music. Hence me singing, oh, love. Hence me singing that. Okay, and girl, you just can't help it. The New Orleans girls, the way Keisha Cole's song, Love, plays in the back of our minds, girl. I don't know if it's everybody like it's the New Orleans girls, but there's a bounce song, girl, okay? Seven, one, nine, four, eight, one. I found you. Ooh. Look, I ain't even warmed up, girl. Listen, wait till after my workout. I'll be able to hit that hit. It's hard from way up and through here. Stink on it. Okay, all right, y'all, I'm sorry. The award-winning singer made her acting debut playing herself in Lifetime by Keisha Cole. Y'all have got to watch this shit. It's so hard to catch stuff on Lifetime. This is my story, which shows her heartbreaking split from her first husband, former NBA player, Daniel Booby Gibson. Okay, country, find somebody, all right? Will always have a place to lay his head because the Lord has blessed him with looks, height, and the gift of gab. Slow and country but Gab nonetheless. Mm -hmm. The Heaven Sent artist and Daniel Booby Gibson wed in 2011 and share a 13-year-old son, DJ. In the movie, the couple has a happy relationship, which ultimately takes a turn because of infidelity. However, they didn't end their union right away, a decision Keisha Cole attributes to her childhood and son. Keisha said, 
that was a lot of the reason why I didn't get a divorce through all the cheating because it was like, I just want to do it for my kid. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, can he have two parents in the same home? Cole, whose late mother, Frankie, battled addiction, spent time in foster care and didn't learn who her biological father was until she was an adult. According to the Grammy nominated entertainer, as a child, she yearned for the union of her biological parents. In the end, however, wanting that for her own child wasn't enough to maintain her marriage, which officially ended in 2017. At some point, she says, you just got to choose you and choose to be healthy. The mother of two gave birth to her second child, Tobias, in 2019 with her ex-boyfriend, Nico Kale, while co-parenting with her children's fathers has its ups and downs. The children come first, even when the parents disagree. That's a good sign, girl. That's a good sign. Regardless, if my kids don't have both parents, I'm trying to create that safe space of co-parenting. That's really what it's about. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to comment on this. I don't know if she can act, girl. I'm going to have to go and look because she's always giving dry. OK, she's always giving dry. But I'm going to have to go and check it out and then I'll let y'all know. Yes, make sure y'all like the video. Y'all want to hear what I have to say about Booby and Keisha Cole and everything that she just said. I'm going to y'all Okay, so to be very clear to everybody, because when I give this commentary, a lot of people love to assume things. I had my father in my life every day until he died. He died when I was 19. Okay, him and my mother were together. He raised me. Not only was he a provider and a protector in our household and in our community, his reputation preceded him. I understood that I was protected walking around New Orleans because people could identify me as their children, my mom's and my dad's. OK, so I grew up having a father that was protective, that talked to me, that taught me things, that gave me my first gun, that gave me me the game that spent time with me that dropped me off that picked me up that we had things that we did together just he and I the reason why I love watching movies and all of that so much is because that's something that me and my dad did together okay so I just want to put that out there before I say this at the end of the day y'all cannot make these men be fathers if they don't want to if they don't want to be fathers you cannot make them be fathers. Staying with them is not going to make them a present parent. It is only the desire inside of them to be opposite of what they've seen, to provide what is necessary to prove and be of value as a man. It is only up to them. You cannot make them do anything. You also can't stop them from doing anything in real life. If you really want to keep it a buck. But a lot of men do not want to do what is required and they want to blame the women for it. So for me, the rationale that I didn't have a daddy growing up, I didn't know my dad. So I'm going to stay in an unhealthy relationship so that my child doesn't experience that loss. However, what my child does experience is watching their parents be miserable together and fight in the household all the time. That is going to then introduce a new set of issues. I love it, come on. Your commentary is sometimes unbalanced. I feel the world is unbalanced. So. Maybe that's on par. Um, women, young ladies have to take accountability and we can't blame grown men for grown women's decisions. Okay, so when did I blame him for her decisions? When did I do that? When did I do that? When did that happen? Or did, I'm just saying, when did that happen? When did that happen? Because what I really feel is that you should see men and whoever for who they are and do not try to change them. 
Do not think that your love is going to change them. Do not think you staying with them is going to change them. Simply accept that they're not going to provide what is needed and move accordingly. Exactly. Accountability isn't the same as responsibility. And we're often having different conversations. Y'all want women to be accountable. But the truth of the matter is when women are the ones that are primarily raising the children, they are taking the accountability. <laughs> that is the accountability, taking care of the child. Now, what everybody wants is for women to take accountability for the men that they pick. And OK, we can give you that. I'll say that. Be more mindful of the men you pick. That's why we're having these conversations. That's why we're talking about this. So you don't have any expectations of niggas that ain't going to do what they supposed to do. Because if a man wants to take care of his children, he's going to take care of his children. My father was married at 18 because he got his high school girlfriend pregnant. They were together for a number of years, had my brother, maybe two or three years after my sister was born. They stayed together until the cheating started and then they broke up and divorced and she moved to Atlanta with the man that she decided to marry and my dad stayed here and dated. Do you also know what my dad did? Became a single parent. My brother and my sister lived in the house with my father until they went to college. So because, and then my grandfather, who was also in the home, also took care of children that were not his. My grandmother came into the relationship with five children, I believe. All together, my grandmother had eight children. Came into the relationship, came into the relationship with five children. My grandfather said, bring the youngest one on the date. Most of them grew up feeling like my grandfather is everybody's grandfather. Because he took the positioning of a father in everybody's life. Show love to everybody. So yeah, I know what real men look like. Been raised around them. And I know a lot of y'all aren't that. Because all you do is complain about what women do, but you never take accountability and responsibility for your own actions. You don't do shit. These men don't do shit. The least you can do is be a present parent and take accountability for your children and have a relationship with them regardless of whether you're with the mother or not. But a lot of y'all only want to be there and take care of the kids when y'all are with the mother. So, yeah, no, I understand why Keisha decided to stay with him regardless of him cheating on her. Honestly, I'm one of them people that's more prone to being like, OK, do we need to make an arrangement? Do we just need an open marriage now? Can you wear condoms, be communicative and give me my space, too? Can you do that? If you can't do that, then you just want to cheat and take advantage of me and you need to get the f out of my face. But if you just somebody that can't be in a monogamous relationship and we love each other and we could figure it out, then we could figure it out. But if you're just going to be dishonest and not even keep up the, the rules that we have, then there's nothing I can do for you. And it's just time to go. And there's no amount of you should have chose better that is going to make any of this different. The only thing that's going to make it different is it is the man to be different. The woman to be different. That choose better argument is bullshit because everybody is still responsible for their own actions. Her needing to see that booby was ain't shit before she got with him. Is that supposed to mean that after she took him back the first or second time, he wasn't supposed to not lie to her and cheat on her all over again? That takes all that absolves him for responsibility because that's how y'all think. Y'all think that when, when, when the women should have chose better, it absolves the men from being problematic. No, it doesn't because everybody's still responsible for their own actions.
right? That's what y'all want. So when the women leave, that's them taking responsibility for their own actions and saying, you know what? I made a mistake. It's time for me to go. That's it. And she left. So she took responsibility. But nobody, but you know, y'all don't want to bring that up. <laughs> y'all don't want to bring that up. Feel how you feel, girl. But I know one thing. What did Keisha ultimately come to? To choose herself and be healthy. Because that's better for the kids. Being healthy. Showing them how to deal with their emotions. Showing them how to deal with life instead of just moving on and pretending like everything's okay. Which is what a lot of people like to do. So anyway, y'all moving on because it's more divorces to discuss, girl. It's more divorces to discuss. So y'all, I put the picture up here because it's about the family, girl. Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all what Tia said. <laughs> Tia Tamara. <laughs> Tia Tamara. I'm sorry, y'all. Shout out to Doja. <laughs> So Tia Mori says her divorce from Corey Hardwick was a gift to her children. According to reports, you see, you, you follow me? We're moving on to a whole nother woman with a whole nother upbringing, with a whole, <laughs> with a whole different type of life. Grew up in a two-parent household. Grew up having, did not grow up over there where Keisha Cole and them grew up. And still, what is she saying? According to reports, Sister Sister Star spoke out against her decision to divorce the father of her children after 14 years of marriage. As you may know, the estranged couple shared two children together, Cairo and Cree. Tia explained, for them seeing their mother walk in truth, I feel like it's a great lesson for them because it was not an easy decision. It was one of the hardest decisions that I had ever had to make in my entire life. But if they see that mommy can do it, that mommy, no matter what people say, no matter even if there's some sort of doubt, whatever mommy pushed through, I wanted for them to not live a life that I want them to live, for them to not live a life that everybody else wants them to live or what they think they should have, they should be or live. She just don't want them to do shit that other people want them to do. Because we are, are very impressionable in this world. And everybody's societal pressures to be married, to take care of men, to look a certain way, to have a certain energy, to project something, to do this. We get those societal pressures even in our households, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, at school. And it's not just on the media. It's not just on social media. We have social media now. But the same shit that's being said on social media was said before social media. Because everybody likes to blame social media these days when really it just shows you the mindset of most people. Makes it louder. Amplifies it. But she wanted them to see that it is okay to have a bad day. I want them to see that it is okay to choose your joy, to chase your joy. I want them to see that it is okay to live your truth. So this is what she's saying. Now, this is what I notice about a lot of people, right? Y'all read these stories, y'all follow these blogs, and then when people give y'all sound advice, y'all get online and act like y'all so tired of hearing from them. I can't wait to talk about Jada because it really annoys me the way people are always online talking about, oh my God, why should we care about this? Girl, why are you commenting? Why are you reading it? You saw the picture. If you don't care, why are you reading it? So you can comment and tell us that you don't care, but here you are spending time showing us how much you don't care. <laughs> it's so weird. But Tia's advice is very sound, and it's just what I said that Keisha figured out, which is that it is more important to show your children how to really deal with life's issues because things are going to happen whether you like it or not. You don't know if the love you chose at 20 is going to be the same love you have at 40 because sometimes people are in the same space when they're young, and as they grow, they do this. Because essentially, you're, some of y'all are only supposed to be here for a reason and a season, not a lifetime. Some people in your life come to you in a circle. You doing this and they come to you sometimes and then they leave out your orbit and then they come back into your orbit. But the more you go up, sometimes those people can't come back to your orbit because they're not raising. They're not going up. 
So if they're not going up, eventually you're going to be out of their orbit completely. That happens sometimes because they're not willing to grow and you are. And the truth of the matter is I see more women that are willing to grow because they're more connected to everything. In my opinion, men cut off a lot of their emotions. They cut off a lot of self-growth. You don't want to talk. You don't want to communicate. You don't want to understand what's going on inside you. You don't want to deal with your feelings and your emotions. You want to push them away. And so what happens is you don't do any growing as you get older. You're a woman, on the other hand, who's had kids and is a mother and has given her life in some way to someone else has to now do soul searching because her unhappiness is now starting to become abundantly clear. Whereas when she was younger, it was things she was able to ignore because she was focusing on other shit. But the older she gets and the more in tune with herself she becomes, she starts to hear the shit louder because now she's actually listening to herself. It gets louder and louder and louder. So you can't ignore it anymore. And then you make the decision. You make the change. But trust and believe that most women that have been married for years and years, they don't be wanting to leave their husbands. They give them opportunities to grow. They give them opportunities to grow with them. But a lot of you men don't want to listen to women when they're giving you the advice. You don't want to pay attention to what they're doing when they're making that self-improvement for themselves. You don't want to do it. And so when she sets out to improve herself in whatever way she does and she starts to grow, you either have two choices. You're going to hate on her and lose her or you're going to figure out how to do the same for yourself so you can meet her where she is. And a lot of y'all aren't willing to do that because our society teaches men that they don't have to put forth that amount of effort for women. They don't. Think about their relationship. He didn't have to provide in the same manner that she did. He probably didn't have to show up with the kids in the same way that she did. Probably didn't have to show up in the relationship as far as communicating and in doing dates and, and thinking of ways to make her happy just in the interim. He probably wasn't thinking about those things. She was probably coming up with all the dates, making most of the money and doing most of the heavy lifting with their kids in the organizing of their household, because that's what most women do. So at some point. You sink or swim. And some of these men are going to get knocked off because they don't want to change. And so they're going to go and find somebody who's young or who is not familiar on who they really are the way the previous woman is. And they'll trick that woman until she isn't wise. Any, I mean, until she's wiser and she gets out of it. And then they'll get a younger woman. A lot. That's why a lot of old ass men keep getting young girls. It's because they don't want to grow and they want to keep having access to women. They want to keep having access to pussy. Even when they can't even really get in it, even when they can only take two puffs before they pass out and they trying to get in it no matter what. So anyway, y'all, I feel like Tia is giving y'all great advice. Tia talking about her divorce is a way to work through what she's going through and to also share what she's learned. But whenever somebody, especially a woman, is sharing with you something that they've learned that is beneficial to them, if it guides you away from being controlled by men or religion, you fight it. You fight it and you hate them, which is why I can't wait to talk about Jada. But before we get to Jada and them, okay, um, girl, let's go ahead. I hate how long this video could be. I didn't want it to be this long, but I really wanted to get through these topics, girl, because I'm going to cut these up later. So y'all, Diddy. Looks like one of Diddy's partnerships is coming to an end after suing his former liquor uh, liquor, bleh, <laughs> liquor partner, uh, Diageo PLC, for alleged discrimination. The alcohol giant is reportedly cutting ties with the mu musician and had a lot to say about their failed partnership. They say, as we reported back in May, Sean Diddy Combs, made shocking allegations against Diageo, claiming the company racially profiled and neglected his tequila brands. The hip-hop legend has distributed several of his popular alcohol lines in partnership with Diageo, including Ciroc and the newer release, Deleon Tequila. 
Diddy accused the company of stunting his brand's growth by underfunding them and labeling them urban versus for the general markets. In response, Diageo reportedly called the accusations bogus and is seeking for a court judge to dismiss the suit, declaring they will be cutting ties with the billionaire moving forward. Their statement reportedly read, we are saddened that Mr. Combs has chosen to recast the business dispute as anything other than than that and chosen to damage a productive and valued partnership. Mr. Combs' bad faith actions have clearly breached his contracts and let us and let us no choice but to move to dismiss his baseless complaints and end our business relationship. Additionally, Diageo claimed, and I'm probably saying it wrong, but I don't care. Diageo claimed that Diddy himself is actually responsible for their deteriorated partnership, stating Mr. Combs has repeatedly undermined our partnerships and threatened to publicly defame Diageo if we did not meet his unreasonable financial demands. Sounds like what Trump likes to do, but I'm going to leave it alone. We tried for years to salvage the broken relationship with Mr. Combs. We funded the purchase of uh, Delion for the joint venture and proceeded to invest more than 100 million to grow the brand, despite having made nearly a billion dollars over the course of our 15 year relationship. And adding Mr. Combs contributed a total of a thousand and refused to honor his commitments. Sounds like Diddy's trying to get over again. Y'all, I would normally listen to diddy in this situation because i do believe y'all i wanted to put both of these pictures up because i wanted y'all to see the difference a day makes <laughs> 24 little hours jonathan majors is going to be in my members only live um i'm gonna go over the topics at the end of this video that's gonna be in a members only live but yes girl diddy in the new hair in the beijing and all of this girl i wanted y'all to see the difference it's giving darker it's giving darker energy <laughs> is what it's giving. You've always had dark energy, but my God, it's giving dark energy. Yeah, y'all, to me, it sounds like he's dog whistling to black people like he often likes to do. Um, and normally, you know, we would be pulling up, pulling our capes out of the dust, blowing them off and being like, Diageo, what other tequila brands do you support? So we won't support them either. Girl, that's that's what we might try to do, but this sounds like something that ain't got nothing to do with us for real, for real. And you know how people are. They ain't about to boycott no liquor they really like, no matter who owns it, okay? Um, that's just what it is. But to me, I feel like they probably told the truth because this coincides with a lot of what we've heard from Diddy not doing his part in his business, you know, his business relationships, not being upfront, you know, messing over people with the monies and stuff like that. Um, is the members only live right after this or later? It is. I'm going to change the time. Uh, it was set for 2.30, I believe, but I might make it at 3 because I'm going to need at least 15 minutes in between, child. Okay, so to, to, to revocalize, child. Revocalize. All right. Oh, my God. Thank you for becoming a member, Alexandria. I appreciate that. Let me read some of these super chats. Thank you, Caitlin, for the super chat. We really choose each other, men. Uh, we really choose each other. Men should be better. Thank you. Thank you. As if we're the only ones doing the choosing. As if women chase men or some shit. K Rupp, thank you for the super chat. Side note, Bondi girl, I've been listening to the Queen Maker since you mentioned her the other day. Right? Isn't she? She's so good. She's so good. I love the way she pulls out scientific facts to back up everything that she says. Also, like y'all know, if y'all been listening to me, listening to me for a while, y'all know I talk about some of the same things. So as soon as I heard what she was saying, I was kind of like, <laughs> let me go follow them. <laughs> okay. Saltwater daughter. Hey, boo. Thank you for the super chat. When these ninjas use accountability, they are regurgitating Kevin Samuels talking points. They don't know what the word actually means. I agree. Kaylin, thank you for another super chat. It's not healthy, but it makes sense for KC because the war on drugs hit us hard in the Oakland. If you not raised by your grandparents, you were in foster care. I know. 
I understand, girl. I understand. Uh, money to you. Thank you for the super sticker. And thank you, She Is Militia, for becoming a member. And thank you, definitely, Naya, for becoming a member. I appreciate you guys. There has been, I've already posted the link to that. It's on my uh, community page. If you're a Patreon, it's on the community page. And if you are a website member, bondybluesshow.com, it has been put on the forum. So make sure you check out those spots so that you can get the link. Also, I think it's been put in the, I hope somebody put it. Yeah, somebody put it. Thank you, Dequasia, for putting it. Uh, or did I put it in there? You just put this one in there. Child, thank you anyway. Um, but it's in the Discord. If you have my Discord, it's also in there as well. All right. So, yeah, y'all, I'm done with Diddy. I, I'm not sure exactly what to believe at this juncture, but I kind of believe the business, Diageo, um, because Diddy is known to try to get everything for a discount. Okay. All right, y'all. So, oh, wait, before we get into to that, before we get into that, y'all, I have a little segment for y'all, not what not. And I wanted to give a response to this viral video because I was extremely tickled. <laughs> I might have watched this shit like two, three times. I was extremely tickled. Let's do it. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. No, it's not about that though. But you got some, for? Because I want these people to know how you slept with my brother. Whoop de doo. Everybody knew what's up, you. So what did I say about you though? What's type what type of girl that said about you? What you mean? What you mean? Guys, go why can I do it? But you fuck my brother though. Okay. <laughs> like what you want, a cookie? Like, but we got kids, you my baby mom. Okay, I don't owe you no loyalty. What you mean you owe me no loyalty? We got a whole kid and I I'm pay the bills. So. I'm not your girlfriend. I'm a baby mom. I owe you no loyalty. I used to owe you loyalty. I don't owe you nothing now. Yeah, but I pay the bills in here. It doesn't matter. You pay them with you. Ain't nobody pay nothing with me. I just you dropped do. off 2500 over here the other day. Then you dropped off five bins. Who, who dropped off but, 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 what, 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 what that, that say about you as a woman, though? It's fight, food, kid got to eat. You're not providing. Yeah, but we was together for five years. Like, why, <laughs> like, why you think it's okay to, to fuck my brother, though? Time don't mean nothing. Time ain't nothing but a number that can change. I'm just saying, though, like, that's that's crazy that you feel like you it's an right, idol. And, and I'm going to let the whole world know that you fuck my brother. You can't expose me. No, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to expose you with this video, though. Okay, that you fuck you, my brother, the though. The thing is, the thing, the thing is, the thing is, the gap is. No, no, no. You going to look stupid because you trying to expose me. No, no, I'm not gonna look stupid. You gonna look stupid because we got a whole two year old together and you fucked my brother. Okay, the two year old wasn't here when it happened. Why does it matter? But I'm just saying though, but like, what was the point of that though? Like, what you get out of that though? Like, you have no self respect for yourself. You have no self respect for yourself. See, dude, this show that you really childish and you're not, you're not mature at all in no type of way though. Nah, you're not though. You, like, you really, you're, you're really nothing. Nah, but you're nothing though. You're nothing though. You slept And you're really a whore though. You're really a whore. How about that? Yeah, 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 but you, you have no respect for yourself. You think so? No respect for yourself. You I'm, slept with my brother, though. I'm glad your brother don't think that of me. No, no, no. It's, it's not about that, though. It's, I, and, I, and I'm going to have some words with him, too. But it's like, why you don't even... Nah, because like I just don't understand why you don't think about things. Like, think about how I would feel. I don't care about how you feel. Your feelings got nothing to do with me. Go find somebody who cares. Find somebody who gives two I don't care. That's crazy. So stop and get out. That's crazy though. I treated you so you good. Came here for your son. No, no, but I, I treated you. you when we was together, I treated you so good though. Y'all, I loved it. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jamar, uh, Jarmar J for becoming a member. Thank you so much. Thank you, T, for becoming a member. Thank you. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm on her side. <laughs> City girls up a thousand. And listen, 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 y'all. Let me explain. I'm not in my 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 old man's brother. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I, I'm going to remove myself from the family as a whole, okay? But what I will say is men expect to get something for a discount. And that's what this video showed me. You wanted loyalty without having to give it. And you're just mad because it was your brother. But to me, your issue should be with your brother. But see, the reason why you're not recording your brother and shaming him is because you don't see anything wrong with y'all sharing vagina. You don't see nothing wrong with that. You would have been just fine sleeping with the woman that your brother has slept with and vice versa 
as long as it wasn't your baby mom's, right? Because you had a child with her, so now you feel like you have some ownership over her. But you don't have to give her anything except for what you give for the son. And that's another thing. Y'all love to use those kids against women. Now, obviously, the young girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> The young girl, you know, got to work on herself. Everybody got to work on themselves. But to me, it absolutely feels like she chose better. <laughs> Y'all be like, choose better. And she was like, made a mistake with you. Your brother is the nigga I should have chose. Why are you not mad at your brother? And it's, oh, you know why? Because it's okay. You would have been cool. You're not even really mad at your brother because that's how y'all are, right? You're not mad at your brother, but you mad at her. As if she owes you something, that lady don't owe you nothing but to take care of the child that y'all share. And that's all you owe her. Take care of the child you share. When she said, and your brother brought 5,000, so who's really taking care of what? <laughs> I'm not mad at the young lady. She was very, very factual on her shit. And he was talking about she don't have no self-respect. I was like, she got more self-respect than most women because she getting a bag out of y'all niggas. She getting a bag, a bag out y'all niggas. Listen, is, is this a skit? She, it might be a skit, but I'm, I'm more inclined to believe it was real. It was the way she was talking to him that made, and it, like, it was their conversation. Like, it just sounded too real to me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But they often put out skits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to give my opinion on it, child. I don't care. I'm still going to give my opinion. To me, it sounds like she has a lot of respect for herself when she said, I'm, I'm just your baby moms, right? I'm not your girlfriend. I'm not your wife. I don't owe you no loyalty. That means I value myself enough to know that I have no value with you. So I'm going to move accordingly to what the fuck I want to do. That is me honoring and valuing myself because I wanted to fuck your brother. So I'm, I'm going to honor my feelings, respect myself and do what I want to do. You want me to respect you over what I want to do. And you don't respect me over what you want to do. So again, Wanting something that you're not giving. You look dumb, sir. Go talk to your brother. <laughs> Go talk to your brother. Okay. The girl in the video said it was fake. I was low-key surprised. Was it fake or was she lying because people were attacking her online and she probably decided to say it was fake so that they would leave her alone? Because the 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 I don't give a fuck was very real. <laughs> Okay, cold, no emotions. That's what they ask of us. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The city girls are a response to men playing with women's emotions and then telling women to not be emotional. You're too emotional. You, your feelings too much in it. So when the women extract all of that, you want to then devalue them. So when you abuse them, it's okay. When really you just want to abuse them because you can't make them do what you want them to do anymore. When you manipulating them, making them feel like you love them, they were doing what you wanted them to do. But when you keep showing them that you don't love them with your actions and not giving a fuck about how they feel, they learn and they quickly adapt and they take all the feelings out of that shit and they get what they need and they move on just like men do. But the problem is these days, y'all want to teach young girls that that's a problem. And I personally don't feel like you should. Oh, they only worrying about money. They not worrying about the things that matter. Let me tell you something. What matters is working on yourself. What matters is putting yourself first and doing work on you. Once you do work on you, once you figure your out, you attract what is good for you. But up until then, y'all want the girls to be squandering their, their early good years on y'all. And I just don't agree. Girl, that video tickled me down. Okay? Tickled me down. I said, if we don't go together, <laughs> we ain't going steady. We just be fucking around. Yeah, the sex great. Damn, baby, we fucking around. Girl, you got me hot. Coming up in my spot. <laughs> Make sure y'all like the video. Okay, y'all. Why y'all hate Jada so much? So, Jaden Smith. 
was at a actual shroom, a psychedelic Friday at the psychedelic science conference in Denver in a room full of people that understand, study and have interest in shrooms and psychedelics. Not amongst all of you ignorant ass people that do drugs, but see that Jada introduced her kids to psychedelics. And now all of a sudden, oh, my God, she's so trash. She introduced her children to drugs. Do some research on psychedelics. The government tells y'all a lot of stuff that y'all don't agree with now. A lot of the stuff that y'all believe to be true came from the government. They would do research on drugs and find out that those drugs could open people's minds, keep them from being controlled so easily, help them reach other, other spaces inside of themselves so that they can grow and then they would not be easily controlled. Do your research on psychedelics and shrooms. There's a whole documentary on Netflix. Go look it up. Look up microdosing. Do yourself a favor and do some research before you do the We Hate Jada bandwagon jumping bullshit that y'all like to do. Okay? Because it really annoys me. It really does. Because to me, Will and Jada have raised very empathetic, intelligent, talented, beautiful children. That's what I see from them. They may be weird and all of that, but they are smart. They're talented. They have empathy for other people. Uh, Jaden's water in uh, initiative. Willow as a whole, just being a, a very open and progressive young woman in the way she lives her life. Being involved in different types of music and shit. Y'all, I love Willow's music now. Like, <laughs> bitch, I was waving my hair back and forth back in the day. But I really, really love um, Lil Willow's music. Her rock music, oh my God, it's really, really good. She has a really great voice and all of that. So me personally, I feel like when the Smiths stopped looking like the Black people you wanted them to look like, y'all started to hate them. But the entire time, people have been obsessed with their lives. People have constantly talked about their lives for like 20 years. People have dug into their lives, have made assumptions about their sexuality for years. Then people finally decide to come out and start being honest since everybody was all worried about it. And now y'all in the comments talking about how y'all tired of hearing about them. Yet every post gets some of the most engagement because of how much y'all love to hate Jada. And the people who love to hate Jada are so Y'all, I'm about to show y'all a comment that really had me like, what the? F anyway, he said, I think it was my mom, actually, that was really the first one to make that step for the family. He said of Jada Pinkett Smith introducing psychedelics to the rest of the famous Smith crew. It was just her for a really, really long time. And then eventually it just trickled and evolved and everybody found it in their own ways. So she did not give it to them. She was doing psychedelics and probably talking to them about it. And once they got older, they probably became interested and wanted to try. So Smith, 24, credits his psychedelics use with helping him find a deep empathy for his sisters. Sister Willow Smith, or his siblings, and half-brother Trey Smith. Siblings can argue so much and fight so much, and Lord knows me and my siblings have done so much of that in the past, he said. But the level of love and empathy that I can feel for them inside of the psychedelic experiences and outside of the experiences has been something that's profound and beautiful. There is some clinical research to suggest there are legitimate benefits to using psychedelic drugs in proper quantities in safe settings, experts say. But they also remind the general public that these drugs remain mostly illegal. And like any other mental health treatment, it's important to remember nothing like this is a quick fix to all your problems. Multiple psychedelics, including psilocybin, um, ayahuasca, LSD, and mescaline, have been shown in studies to increase emotional empathy, at least in part because psychedelics are proven to boost open-minded thinking. Psilocybin specifically has been proven to increase emotional empathy, but not moral decision-making, according to a 2017 study in an international journal of neuropsychopharmacology. As this concept is fairly new, 
it's really not. They've been talking about this shit since the fucking 60s, but okay. As this concept is fairly new, researchers have also noted that more studies need to be done on the long-term effects of psychedelics that they have on empathy. Smith recalled times when he and his siblings would have an argument, share a psychedelic experience together, and then make up. <laughs> okay. So everybody has something so terrible to say about this, but as somebody that has actually done it before, it does open your mind. It's it, especially done in, you know, micro dosing and, and safe settings. It absolutely has the ability to make you feel better to like help deal with depression and anxiety, more so depression than anxiety for me anyway. Um, and then I also feel like what I experienced on a trip actually kind of fostered where I am right now. The mind opening and the understanding that I got during one of the trips that I had changed my relationship with my husband. At first it was bad, <laughs> but then it found its way to being good. But it was because I had to realize something that I was not seeing clearly. I didn't see it. And it wasn't until we experienced that, that I was able to see clearly. And I was like, oh, because after I was just thinking about everything that happened and how I was thinking and what I was feeling. And I came to a conclusion about my life that I was really way too glued into him and his feelings and what he may be thinking. And I could not understand or deal with my own because I was so worried about his. I learned that on that trip that we took. And so that's why, like, I had started to pull back. That's too much. You're doing too much. You have to reserve some of that for yourself. Now, y'all see where I am now because y'all hear it in my commentary. So at the end of the day, if you don't know, please just either do research or shut up because what ends up happening. So Jada announced that she's coming out with a book and I was like, oh, I can't wait to read it. Right. So I go to the comments and somebody that I follow and I have seen them say very male identified things. Um, but they also give me the vibes of a woman that may not necessarily know herself that well. So her commentary can sometimes come off as male identified because there's a disconnect going on inside of herself. But I'm not going to dig that deep because I'm not trying to, uh, you know, read this lady like that. I'm not because she was great to work with and all of that. But I follow her and some of her commentary is a bit problematic to me. So she says, we don't care. We're weary of hearing about your life, sis. Spare us. And this is where shit got interesting, right? Because I saw her comment. I've seen your commentary before. Not surprising. Okay. But it was AJ Johnson, who's on couples retreat, administering to everybody, that said, I just spit my water. So she laughed at this comment about everybody being tired of hearing what Jada has to say. And then the woman I'm talking about types back to AJ Johnson, because they know each other, types back to AJ Johnson. I'm so tired of her and her perversion of truth and transparency. We're very much awake these days. Are we? <laughs> are we? I don't think so. I think some of us are, but a lot of us are still asleep, but okay. She said, cut this foolishness out and go share your truth with your therapist. Leave us be. Sorry, I'm just fed up. And I'm like, what exactly are you fed up with? Because everybody promotes whatever they have going on online. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to consume it, then you simply don't buy the book. When you see the post about Jada, you simply scroll through it. But you seem to love to come and tell her how you don't care, even though you drop by to comment and give commentary on it. That's very weird to me because the things that I don't care about, I often tend to ignore. I also saw, I'm trying to find it because somebody wrote a long paragraph behind how they so tired of Jada because you cheated on your husband with August Alcina and lied about it. Now, mind you, are y'all mad at Will for what happened with the August Alcina situation? Because he said the same thing she said. Yeah, I am a fan of Jada's, but I'm also someone that can look at a situation objectively. 
And I don't understand being this mad at somebody for doing what everybody else does. When Will Smith was promoting his book, did y'all say we don't give a fuck? Why you keep telling us go tell your therapist? Do y'all say that to any other celebrity when they write a book about their life? Oh, not me? Oh, all right. I always love a girl. I ain't know because I was like, girl, yes, I'm a fan. Why I can't be a fan of Jada? Jada empowered me when I was growing up as a young woman. Child, y'all know I can't see the fools in the comments in the comment section. Will Smith has a whole girlfriend. Has consistently left Jada to fend for herself while he uses her to help with his image as a black man in Hollywood. So I thought it was crazy that AJ, AJ was the one that made that comment talking about spin up. Cause you do the same thing, AJ. AJ, you share. People were saying the same thing about you. So it was very weird to me that both of these women, because the other woman I'm talking about has a podcast. So you disseminate information about yourself and in the media as well. But we so tired and we can't stand Jada. I'm very confused on it. And I really want to understand why. Because to me, it comes off as anytime a woman is not living in a male centered way of being and she has a man that everybody wishes they had or she's able to live in her absolute truth and she doesn't lose anything. Y'all get mad about that because y'all don't want the women to feel like they can have somebody like Will, who y'all think is the bee's fucking knees and he views her as an equal. So she might make mistakes in their relationship, just like he makes mistakes in their relationship, but they decide to still stick it out and stay together because how they value each other is on another level. Everybody act like they don't understand that shit, but most of y'all fucking parents are together and fucking other people are together and sleeping in separate beds or together and really don't like each other. People do it every day. Aunties and uncles and shit. And people do it every day because once you get older, you realize what I have created with this person is one thing. I don't want to create this thing with these other people. I might want to have sex with these other people. I might want to experience these people's energies. But as far as creating children, developing a household, having my DNA forever connected to somebody, no, I'm going to be real choosy about that specific job. Just like men are. Just like men choose a very specific type of woman to have their children with and to be the, 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 the front and center as, as their foreground. Because let's not forget the way Jada put her career on hold so that she can create this family that helped Will to get where he was trying to get. This is somebody that was trying to make her own way and still ended up making that sacrifice for a man. Jada used to speak all the time about as women, when you find yourself and you figure out who you are, then you can help your man figure out where he's trying to go. And that was some real ass shit. That was one of the realest things I ever heard in my life. And do you know back when she said that shit, they were dogging her out even then, making it seem like her whole existence was about this nigga as if she did not have box office hits her damn self. Y'all sought after them people. Y'all was all involved in their lives. Y'all talked about Will Smith being, being gay and being bisexual and fucking with Dwayne Martin for years. And Jada just had to go along and deal with it. But as soon as somebody bring up Tupac, not everybody in their fucking feelings and he needs to divorce her. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? AJ's energy is bothersome to me for some reason. I'm glad to see her success, but there's something performative and not authentic to me. That's what I'm starting to feel because that response that she gave, I was like, so y'all two have conversations about how Jada ain't shit together, right? But essentially, AJ, you kind of are and do the same shit that Jada does. Overshare so that you can help other people, correct? I do the same thing. I've always been an oversharer, always. That's just who I am. Some people, some women do Seek out self-improvement. And as we seek it out, we share what we know with people, hoping that we can help them. And a lot of times I feel like that's exactly what Jada be doing. But because y'all don't want to have y'all minds unwrapped from your indoctrination. Because you want to stay male identified. Because you want to stay in imbalanced relationships where men don't value you as full human beings because you feel safety in it. 
You don't want to hear Jada. And now she's the bad guy. It's weird to me, y'all. I really wish somebody would present me with something real. <laughs> Because nobody, nobody presents me with anything real when it comes to y'all dislike for Jada. Because anything y'all say that Jada has done, Will has done it, or there are other men that y'all love that have done the same shit Jada's done. But because she's a woman, you hate her. And the last thing that needed to happen was for Will to defend her. Oh my God. Will gets up and acts out his own trauma about not protecting his mom in order to protect his wife. And everybody rushes to say she made him do it. And y'all want to talk about how we don't hold women accountable when she didn't get up and smack nobody and y'all blamed her. It was very weird. And then once y'all heard Will say, no, I had to defend my wife. Not all of a sudden y'all back to maligning Will. Y'all back to making it seem like, oh, Will so pussy, even though most of you niggas wish you were him. But you're going to try to get online and emasculate him. Because he found a person that's willing to accept him and he's also willing to accept them. But y'all gonna keep hating on Miss Jada and she gonna keep trying to help y'all. To me, she's like one of them prime examples of like how y'all do black women. One of the prime examples. They never did nothing to nobody. Just share what she know. Be honest about shit when she can. And y'all tear her apart for it every chance you get. It's so weird. So y'all, some other problematic relationship shit. Let's move on from here. Let's move on from here. We're going to talk about Sierra and Eric, girl. Let's talk about Sierra and Eric very quickly. Okay, hold up. Where's the video? Because I, I did a video. Okay, Baby, you did a lot of shit. I, what did I do? First of all, y'all, Eric used to have all, we was in a full-fledged relationship and he was having been sending him naked pictures in a shower. Sierra, that is not true. When we happened, matter of fact, Wait. that is true. Matter of fact, that is true. That was in the beginning of our relationship because you were going crazy. But you, you said a butt? I, no, I said butt because I forgot and I had to catch myself. So wait, so, so th was that true? Right. Because we being transparent, that's, that's, I caught girls in a, he that's made a girl. Absolutely wait, true. don't over talk me. I was he talking. made a girl get butt booty ass naked and get in a shower while we were in a relationship and bathe her hairy ass pussy in ass and take pictures while she was doing it and he, she sent it to Eric. Is that true that or is, is that true. not true? That is true. Okay, come so, drain these potatoes for me please. so I knock your ass out. See, there you go. Flashbacks. There you go. And this yeah. is what got me to that because you were very <laughs> no, you really crazy. got me fucked up. No, I don't have you messed up. You just got to watch yeah, how you talk to men because men don't me. like that. But no, like I ain't really like that. Yes, though, you are. <laughs> show them how it used to be. You never acknowledged. I didn't feel wanted. I, I made my world about you and I lost a lot of my emotion pouring into you because I've seen your potential and I was forcing myself to shit. just be the best husband I could be, the best uh, father to the children that I could be. And I, I kind of lost myself within a relationship. And then at the same time, He's with how you with were women. me, you were, you were very disrespectful. You were very bossy. You, you, you don't, you talk at me. Ooh, y'all can't say, stand that bossy or, shit. Or showing me or teaching me. You get loud. Can I ask you a question? Hey, let me finish my okay. side, and then I got you. I you just you just did things that pushed me away, mm -hmm. and then it's just like I came to your world. I walked away from all my stuff I had in New York to be with you. I walked away. I left my family in New York, and you know, as you know, I'm very family oriented. I left because all of that and I in your world because you knew you, you just were so demanding and so aggressive. Sarah was already famous, and, and it made me feel like you didn't want me. I just felt like I was added to your world. I and can that made me it. feel like that. Yeah. And it was just difficult. And then you just I was Go ahead, you just say something. He's right. I was very rude with my mouth. I was very demanding and I had became this mean person. But can you just be honest and say what made me? Because in the beginning, I was loving on you. I took good care of you. Please, I cooked talk you. About I it. you. Don't I start in the middle, nigga. Start cares. at the beginning. I did the bumps in your face. I did everything. But once I went through your phone I'm and I started seeing things, and I, Eric, can you not say, I came to you, I said, Eric, stop doing the stuff that you're doing to hurt me because you're going to make me hurt, hate you. Did I not say that? You did say that. I said, stop with the girls. I used to call in. I said, stop with the girls. Stop with the stuff that you're doing. And I'm getting emotional because I'm just thinking about it. I used to tell you. It's like I gave you fair warning to stop doing those things to me. I said, 
And now I know why I needed you to stop because I wasn't mentally and physically just healed from my past relationships. I said, Eric, stop with the girls. So continuing on in our case study today. <laughs> the fuck? Did y'all see that? Did y'all hear that? Did you hear how he basically said she was bossy and she did respect him, but you knew she was a boss. You left New York to come and be with her and then you resent her for it. And then they're forgetting this whole part about him being jealous mm -hmm. of her children. We didn't see, I didn't see the whole thing. I only saw what they put on the shade room. I might have to go find the whole thing to see if they actually talked about the way he treated her children. But that's a huge red flag for me. Any man that doesn't want to also love your children in a relationship with you, you don't need to be with him. You don't need to be with him. If he's not going to come in and be patient and kind and loving towards your children and understand that they are children and they need to get re they need to get acclimated to him. Also, you're also keeping out the part on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta where you talked about the way he cursed you out and tell you to suck his dick in front of your son. So teaching your son how to disrespect you. He needs to go. She don't need to give him no more chances. She don't need to be with him no more. I'm going to go look for it, y'all. But to me, it does sound abusive. It did sound like it worked when he flipped everything on her. I feel like I lost myself in you. No, you've heard women say that. A lot of you men, y'all only regurgitate what y'all have heard because you really don't have the emotional intelligence or the honesty to really be real about your feelings. Because if you was really being real, you saw her as a lick from the very fucking beginning, which is why you were okay with being a woman with kids when you never wanted to be with a woman with kids. Right, Eric? But she was a boss and she was on Love and Hip Hop. And you knew you could use her so that you can promote this image. The problem is she required you to actually show up and you couldn't manage it because most of y'all are really selfish and y'all are pretending that you're not selfish. You're pretending to be a good guy. You're pretending like you're going to love her and her kids. Y'all these damn nuts. You're pretending like you're going to do what you say you're going to do. But when you actually have to do it, you can't do it. And you showcase yourself as being somebody that can't control your emotions, you're cheating on her all over the place and embarrassing her. You're talking crazy to her in front of her kids. You're jealous of her kids going through her daughter's room, going through her daughter's things. Feeling like she needed to get your approval before she moved her son into y'all's house. You know. Sierra need to go be alone. Please go be alone, Sierra. Stop bringing these niggas on your platform. Stop feeding them. Because that's what you're doing. Don't nobody know who Eric is. Don't nobody care that he Bishop Whitehead cousin. That's just a, that's an even worse look. Okay? Just when you thought it couldn't get no worse, sir. Shout out to Roxanne. Thank you, Jersey, to, to Jasmine for the super chat, girl. I'm trying. Thank you. If they're a letter, bitch. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you for the super sticker, Laszlo Sun. Thank you. Like, just making excuses. No accountability whatsoever, child. But we're going to continue to see them. Make sure y'all check out my reviews of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, okay? Because that's what I started out doing, y'all. I review these stupid ass shows. <laughs> But we have good conversations. That last one I did, we had a really good conversation in that one. Okay, y'all, we got three more topics, right? We ain't going to be here that much longer so my, I can get to my members only live. Okay, listen. Y'all, Trina, Trina was out there performing at the BET Awards. I'm so mad. I thought I had loaded this video of her. Hold up, y'all. Let me see. Let me see if it's somewhere. <laughs> Let me see if it's somewhere. Because then I could just pull it up and share my screen with y'all. Because I want us to talk about this, girl. I do. I need us to see it for ourselves. Where is the video? This doesn't even make any sense. Oh, is it because I was editing it downstairs? It's because I was editing it downstairs. God damn it. That's okay, y'all. I'll share my screen. Can y'all like the video while I pull this up? Because I thought I had it. 
I'm so sorry. Y'all see, I actually had graphics for y'all today. So <laughs> be grateful. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Also, for anybody that wants to complain or let me know about, you know, the equipment that I should improve and what I need. Y'all, my cash app is at Bondi Blue. Okay. If y'all hold up, let me put it up here for y'all so that y'all can see it because, you know, people was telling me about how I just need some better equipment. You know what I'm saying? And I, I understand that. Help me out, please. I, I will really, really appreciate it. Okay. That light that Tasha has that everybody was talking about, that light is $900. So if you guys want to help out with that, I will greatly appreciate it. Okay. Up until we get all of that, though, I hope the actual content will suffice. Okay. I hope it will suffice. Okay. All right. Hold up. Why am I acting like I don't have this right here? Hold up. Because I got to make sure I play this for y'all. Hold up. Trina. Y'all love Trina. Okay. Here we go. Y'all. So this is Trina performing for the BET Awards because I don't know name. You don't know Naho. Uh -uh. That been the place that I've been. Who can spend the grand that I spend? My five, six best friends. You don't know Naho. Uh uh. That's up chain like me. One little up chain like me. Up chain like me. You don't know name. Okay, listen. I love Trina. I want y'all to understand the first three albums that Trina has, I know them hoes by heart. Hustler, I'm the queen of this South shit. Tight with a cute face, that's what I'm about, bitch. Sexy, specialized in filet show, all about my pesos, never was a fake hoe. Okay? Understand me. That's my girl. Okay? However, Trina, she look like Missy Elliott in this picture, right? However, Trina, you have gained a little weight. And ain't nothing wrong with it because you always and still will be the baddest, Okay? But we going to need for you to wear clothes that are more flattering to where your body at right now because you was confusing me. And I don't want to be confused like that. I don't want to be confused like that, y'all. Like, Trina, what's going on, my girl? Why are you not working out? Are you on stage breathing hard? Because it's giving you not even doing no cardio. It's giving you just eating and drinking whatever you want, eat and drink like them just who beat on the porch all day. I don't understand what's going on. You think it's the fine Royce? I hope she's I hope she's healthy, no matter what. No matter what her body looks like. And I don't even want her body to look different. I just want her to dress for it. That's all. I just want you to dress for it because it confused me. That's all. I just want her to wear, wear stuff that's more flattering. Stop wearing the shit that used to be flattering to your shape back when you could suck it in and hide it from us. But now that you can't suck it in and hide it from us, I just want you to dress a little bit more for that. Because I feel like there's a way to do it. You know what I'm saying? There's a way to do it where it could still be sexy. Like, girl, it's all ass. So all you got to do is give us one of them nice pleated skirts. You know what I'm saying? Give us a real cute pleated skirt and some type of top that will camouflage your stomach, wrap around you, or suck you in in some capacity. And get up there and do your thing. Because you're the baddest bitch. Okay? But what you can't do as the baddest bitch is be out there being delusional about what we see and based on the society that we live in. I didn't say she couldn't define sexy. I didn't say that. I didn't say she wasn't sexy just because she had a belly. That's not what I said. I didn't even say she should change her body. I ain't say that neither. Because I do see a little, a little tone to her arms. So I don't know. But what I did feel like a good old peplum would have saved a lot of us confusion and we would have kept our attention on, on what was important, which was the performance. That's all. That's all, y'all. I love Trina. I want the best for her. I want her to get out there and perform and I want to focus on her rap. 
I want to focus on the energy she giving me on stage, not extreme practice. Because you know we would have been excited. You know we would have been happy. And everybody like, no, it's the fibroids. And it's like, oh, oh shit. All right. Now we got to think about the fact that you got fibroids and then feel bad about it. You know what I'm saying? I think she has talked about the fibroids before. I think she has. And listen, as women, our bodies betray us. So I ain't mad at you, sis. I just want you to dress for the occasion because I love you. And I don't like that everybody talking about you like this. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, listen. I, I'm just keeping it a buck. I love Trina. I don't like this type of conversation all week. She had to put out a, a fucking, she had to put out a whole message to everybody from her PR to tell y'all she not pregnant. That's, a, hello, hello. That's unnecessary. When you could just simply find clothes to camouflage. Simply find clothes to camouflage. It's okay. All we want to see is your ass anyway. That's all. All right. Second to last time. If she did continuously support and support and support, people will then say, Chloe is not where she is on her own. And Possibly. it would be all because Beyonce is supporting and Beyonce is pushing. Yeah. No, Chloe is where she is on her own. It's kind of too sorted here because had Beyonce promoted it, Everybody would be like, that's unfair. You got her promoting. And right. then you feel like because she didn't do enough. She's on her label. People know her music. She's on a sold out tour. So I just had to throw that out there. Like, why was that such a big deal? I think it was just because it was beyond. Of course. Why wouldn't she support her? Or who, promote said she her? Didn't su who said she didn't okay. support? Well, right. So, so I did she? Who, do we know? Who, who said she did not support? Do we, all right, do we know she was, that she's, she's very she's very involved in helping people creatively. Now Chloe can write. She makes her own beats herself. Right. Now, no. But I don't think because y'all would have had something to, not y'all cuz we family, we cousins. <laughs> Our cut the <laughs> folks that ain't related to us in this room would have had something to say cuz they didn't do it in here. Right. Y'all wasn't yeah. part of that. Okay, so why didn't y'all support? Why didn't y'all, why didn't y'all support the album? She does have a sold out tour. And I okay. think sometimes, sometimes seeing stuff live in person helps a person say, I got to cop that album. Right. So yeah. you're obviously a fan of hers if her tour is sold out. Her yes. very first one is sold out. Right. Boom. So and you make more money on tours and merch than album sales anyway. Right. Listen to that. She's right. going to be just right. fine. Right. And as I think about it, Beyonce doesn't, she doesn't promote anybody else on her, on her platforms. Pretty you know nice. what I mean? Most of her page yes. is just her beautiful, artistic looking fashion pictures. And so it wouldn't be something that she ordinarily does. Beyonce don't even follow nobody. <laughs> Beyonce don't follow nobody, baby. She definitely ain't posting nobody on her social media. This is them just trying to do a good job at hosting a podcast and being problematic. That's all they're trying to do, okay? Um, but they're just as dry as they want to be, child. If it wasn't for Michelle feeling the need to gather people, we, we would have had nothing to hear. There would have been nothing to see people move on, okay? But Michelle had to gather the girls, and she wants y'all to stop playing with Beyonce like that. So I swear, when you be knowing people in real life, and you know they're a good person, and they be doing the best they can, but everybody be feeling like they, they the Lord or something, and they're supposed to be... So, you know, everywhere at every minute of every day, making everybody life better just because everybody on social media said so. You know what I'm saying? Like, you be feeling like you got a buck for your people. You got you feel like you got to be like, uh uh, you don't even know her like that. Hold up, school bag. Y'all, records don't sell as much as they used to. First of all, that's the first thing. Second of all, what's most important is that we constantly see Chloe. So the more we see Chloe, the more there's a demand to see Chloe. Just to be clear, I don't know if y'all know that, but that's literally how this goes. Even if you don't like her personally, the more you see her, the more people want to see her, the more people are going to pay to see her. And also, Michelle is absolutely right. That's that tour being sold out is the main win here. Okay, because I want to see her. I wish she would have came to New Orleans because I would have went and saw her. She's extremely talented. I think people always like to pick black girls apart for dear life. 
I think no matter what the black girls do, if they are not being sexy, you ignore them. If they are sexy, you pay attention to them, but you constantly criticize them and pick them apart for everything that they do. You can't win for losing. What I do know is I personally enjoy Chloe's music. I think she's a great artist. I think she's young and she's growing into who she is right in front of everybody's eyes. And that's hard to do. And I just wish her all of the strength in the world to deal with all of the ignorant people that can't sing, can't make music, can't dance, can't perform. But what they can do is get online and run their fucking mouth about something that they don't know about and something that they cannot do. That's what they will do. Child, if you're good at it, you might get paid for it. <laughs> like me. But, you know, I can sing, though. And I, I do try to, you know, only talk, you know, when I tell them, when I don't know nothing about something, I'll tell y'all no. <laughs> okay, I'll tell y'all no. But, yeah, I was here for Michelle checking them. And I feel like they was playing their good cop, bad cop bullshit, but I was still kind of bored. So, shout out to Michelle for definitely, you know, for definitely giving them something to talk about. Because I forgot they was even over there doing a podcast. Sound like they had a live show. I didn't even know they were still doing live shows, girl. Good for them. Potomac must, you know, must be coming back around. But I do feel like Beyonce probably did as much as she is expected to do as the record label owner. Like, I think she did what she is capable of doing from her standpoint with being fair to all other artists and all of that and not showing favoritism. I think that she probably is handling her business accordingly because she's always been good at handling her business. So, yeah. I'm with Michelle, girl. <laughs> I'm with Michelle, girl. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. So, boo. Okay, so let's move on to the last topic. Now, listen, y'all. After this live, so it's 226. It's almost 230. I'm going to push the live back to about 315, okay? But my members, okay? I will be doing a live. We're going to talk about Cheryl Strawberry and her husband, girl, and what's going on over there. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about DeVito and how he out here getting all of the girls pregnant, even though he is married. We're also going to talk about JT, Ice Spice, Uzi Vert, and the Musinex Monsters feelings about what took place at the BET Awards. We also have some other topics in there. We're going we gonna to listen to Amber Ali's diss track to watch Jocelyn Hernandez. We will also be discussing Jonathan Majors and all of the recent developments in his case as well as Neo and another one of his baby mamas, because if there's one thing you is going to do is go around and have children with a whole bunch of random females for no apparent reason, other than the fact that you can and you refuse to use protection or, you know, put a, put a cap on that thing. Okay. So yeah, that's what we'll be talking about on a Bondi Blue show that is for my members only. If you're a member of my website, bondibluesshow.com, a Patreon member or a member here on YouTube, check the community pages in the forum to get the link. It's already been sent out also in the discord all right so yeah back to kim and croy girl if these two white people ain't gonna do nothing they're gonna call the police on each other so we want y'all to see black people it's not just you this is the way they are they're gonna call the police anytime they want to you know cause a stir up and embarrass somebody okay mm -hmm. it's not just you that they like to call the police on it's just that when the police come you are the ones more likely to get hurt because the, the, the police department has you know internalized institutional racism involved and they they secure that by bullying the people that speak out against it okay you know just how y'all try to do whenever we speak out of what you know about the way these men treat women and y'all get mad at us and want to defend them uh-huh similar way the same things that happen in racism, which means the same things that white people do to black people in racism, it's the same thing that men do to women. I don't know if y'all peeped that yet. That's that whole patriarchal shit that y'all don't want to hear about, but it's still the truth. But yeah, these white people, child, they mixing all of it together. They just giving y'all a whole heap of messy ass shit. Let's hear the latest in, in the hey King Croy. I'm still super quiet. I don't know why. I just have a situation here where my husband is threatening a kidnapping because my girlfriend um, took my son on a play date. And now he has harassed not only the mother, but my son is shaking and hysterically crying. And now I'm just going to leave and just go pick him up to prevent this situation. I just don't know what else to do at this point. Okay. Can you say that's what happened? I'm, I'm sorry. Can you please tell the story again? 
I'm sorry, what was that? I can hear you. I'm just going to put you on speaker just because my son, I dropped my son off. At, I live in the manor. I dropped my son off at the front gate for six years. They were going to the rodeo, whatever. My husband, we're going through a divorce, just came in and said that he's going to file kidnapping charges on her. And I said, absolutely not. I agreed that she could take him. And then he talked because he's crying hysterically on the phone. And now I'm going to pick him up and just to create any kind of further stuff. That it's just um, I did call my lawyer to ask him if it was kidnapping. Said I didn't want police to get in trouble, and he said it's not. If one parent can consent, um, and then my husband did steal my bag that has all my divorce paperwork and all my stuff in it. This is just so petty, and I, I hate to call 911 for this situation. I just was so frantic in the moment when I realized that he was gone and Elise didn't want him going to the house and doing anything crazy because he's known to do crazy things. Okay, may I have your name? The police come to Well, I, I don't now. I'm just gonna let it I'm gonna go pick my son up. Um and then um I don't feel like this is gonna be the end of it to be honest with you tonight. Um so I will probably call you back rather than kind of go back and forth with this and the police. I'm just going to pick my son up because he's very distraught. Um, and then I will call you if I need you, which I'm sure uh, he will be screaming and yelling. I will need you guys in a little bit. I just decided to leave the house and just pick him up. Okay. Just call us back when you need us. I appreciate you. Now you want to talk about somebody that needed therapist. <laughs> you want to talk about somebody that need to just go talk to their therapist this is it right here this is it right here okay girl what so y'all over there fighting like some damn children for whatever reason i'm so confused y'all i don't understand it y'all are divorcing why can't y'all be amicable with all of these damn children see she was over there so happy and throwing it in everybody's face that she kept filling her womb with this, this boy's children, right? Now look at her. They done lost the damn house. They in debt because she likes to gamble and buy stuff. And he got a weed problem and, you know, maybe some other proclivities. We've always felt that Croy was a tad bit, um, you know, hidden, hidden racism, hidden abuser, you know, stay quiet when people are around and just smile. That way they don't know what's really going on in here. But as these men get older, it becomes harder and harder for them to conceal who they truly are. And the same for her. They're like a really good example of the way like white people really show up because they're showing you in public as they've always done. But a lot of white middle class couple couples are just like this. They're messy as fuck. They're dogging each other out. They dog each other out to their friends and family. They're dysfunctional. They really are not healthy in their relationships with each other or their children. And you think because they're white, they got something figured out that you don't have figured out. <laughs> you think just because they empower in this system that that means in their lives they are more together or you know they have more shit figured out than you and then you find out that having all of those things having money at one point or another all of that does not mean that you won't be immature egotistical Drug addict, alcohol abusing, gambling, trailer park trash. I mean, when we tell y'all certain things, like her daughters, somebody said they're racist and disrespectful. The first time I figured something wasn't right in that household is when them tweets came out. I mean, remember when she was tweeting about, you know, wanting to suck John Legend's dick for concert tickets? Remember that? Yeah. Not a good, not a good parent. And that's why I'm telling y'all the hidden racism, like the underlying racism and all of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a, that doesn't just affect one thing. It spreads. It spreads. Okay. So just know those of them that promote that and really live in that racist shit, 
like they do, like they did, even if hiding it, they were living in it, reveling around in it and shit. And you see that the KKK clan is still unhappy. Life in turmoil. Can't hold on to the shit that they had. Yeah, no, it was the sweetie shit for sure for me. I haven't liked him since the sweetie situation. Not even a little bit, not even at all. Well, with that being said, child, I gave y'all all of them damn topics. <laughs> so I feel like the amount of time kind of made it, made sense. And I know a lot of y'all are getting through y'all work day anyway on this Good Friday. So I hope y'all enjoyed the show. For all of my members, please come back at 3.15 for the members only live that I'm going to do. Because um, I got to get some, you know, a little bit more graphics and stuff. So I need that little time to get that together. So be back here for 315, everybody. Make sure you get your links. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Before I go, hold up. Wait a minute. Let me thank another. Hold on again. Okay, no, that's it. I think that was all, right? I think that was all my members. Thank you, nerdy girl. I think uh, I think I said thank you to everybody else. Okay, I think I did. I hope I did. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. It, it moved up. I know I saw some other ones. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Janae. Thank you, team of the dreamer. Okay, I appreciate y'all so much for becoming members of my channel. Um, and I will see you guys in the members only live at 315. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Subscribe, like the video, share it, and I'll see y'all 